If you ever see anyone describe anything as must have, steer clear of them. They're a penis. In reality, when it comes to photography, there's only two things that are actually must have for everyone. One, some sort of a camera that can take pictures. Two, some sort of a medium to record said pictures to, like film or a memory card. Everything else is optional, personal preference, depending on what you're going to be shooting. But in this video, I wanted to share with you three fairly budget items that I almost never leave home without. Certainly at least two of them, usually three. Now, we've had a change of scenery for this video. We're out of the studio and we're in the kitchen. Specifically because I wanted crap lighting to demonstrate something. But in getting crap lighting, it also means I've got crap acoustics. So please bear with me on that one. Now, I'm not going to include the usual things that most people say are must-haves and you can't leave home without, like spare batteries and spare memory cards or a tripod because they're all well covered and some of them aren't always that budget. The first one does sort of link into tripods a little bit though, which is a shutter release cable. Some might connect to the camera wirelessly or use an infrared beam to trigger the camera. This one plugs into a port on the side of the camera, which does mean you can't go too far away from the camera. Now there's generally two situations where I will usually use a shutter release cable, usually on a tripod as well. Firstly, if I have say the camera high up in the air or more often than not when I'm trying to do a top down shot of a product and I've got the camera overhanging. So the last thing I wanna do is push the shutter button on the camera because it's gonna start vibrating the tripod. And even with a 10 second delay sometimes, the thing is still vibrating when the pitch is then taken and it would blur the results. So using a shutter release cable allows me to fire the camera without actually inputting any vibration into it. The other time I'll generally use it is if I'm trying to do longer exposures. Now most cameras will let you get shutter speeds down to about 30 seconds, but sometimes I like to go longer than that. And the only way to get longer than 30 seconds is to go into bulb mode. Now bulb mode will keep the camera firing for as long as you've got the button pressed. Now obviously you're not gonna press and hold the shutter button on the camera itself for long periods of time because you'll end up shaking the camera. You realistically don't wanna be pressing and holding the button on a shutter release cable because well, it just get boring. But thankfully a lot of shutter release cables these days have an ability to let you lock the button down so you don't have to keep hold of this and then you can just quickly release it when you want the exposure to finish. There are obviously other times you might consider using these. Maybe you're standing in front of the camera, you wanna take a picture of yourself, but you don't wanna rely on a self timer and making sure you're in the right spot for the focus. So you could use a shutter release cable for that, provided you are standing close enough to the camera. Rather versatile little tool to have and very inexpensive as well. I think for a little cheap one like this is about a tenner. And there's no weight to it and takes up barely any space. So this thing always in my kit bag. Another very small, easy thing that I have in my kit bag at all times is this. This is the Andy Cine CL Mini Light. Now the reason that this is so light is unlike most LED light panels, there's no internal battery to power this thing. You can either power it using a USB port or you can fit a battery onto the back of it. Now these come in three variants, I believe. This one is powered using the Sony FZ100 battery. They do a version that takes the Canon LPE6 and they also do one that takes the Nikon EL15 batteries, I believe it is. Now the reason why I carry this round isn't specifically because it's a light, although that is very handy to have. Even with it only being a small light panel, yes, you know, it's not going to have the best diffusion, it's not going to have the best range, it's not going to be suitable for a whole lot of situations in terms of lighting videos or shooting stills, but given how small and light it is, and it's powered by a battery that I always have in my bag anyway, it's very handy for when I'm walking around in dark places. I get a lot more light off this than I would off, say, my phone torch, for example. 
But the other reason why I always carry this around with me is the USB type C port on the side not only powers the light, but if there is a battery fitted onto the back of it, it doubles up as a charger as well. So I don't need to bother with a dedicated FZ100 charger anymore. My phone has a USB type C port as well, which means I've always got a type C cable on me and USB ports are everywhere these days, or potentially I've got a power bank. But it means that I can always have a battery sitting on charge or ready to go, even if I'm off somewhere else with the camera using it. And it costs 20 quid, which is not that much more than you would pay for a normal dedicated charger anyway. And this one doubles up as a light. So again, it's just one of those that for how cheap it is and how easy it is to just have in my bag and not get in the way, Personally, always carry this around with me. The one that I don't always necessarily carry around with me, just for how big it is, but it is a very versatile tool to have, is a five-in-one reflector. Now, these come in a range of different sizes. I think this one is 110 centimeters. Don't necessarily believe what it says on the front there, because I have actually got more than one of these. Now, obviously, that's not 110 centimeters. That is. Now the five in one reflector, slightly misleading. You get a silver reflector, you get a not very reflective, or you can unzip it and reverse it. Gives you a gold reflector or a plain white reflector. So maybe sometimes you're shooting in a situation that's got a very strong fill light. You've got some very heavy shadows that you haven't got a light source to get rid of them. So having somebody hold up a reflector obviously just helps cancel out some of those harsh shadows. Moreover, what I generally use it for though is without a cover on at all because without a cover, it's sort of a semi-transparent. You can still see light sources through them, but it dulls them down quite a lot. So where I will generally use this most is I quite often find myself in situations that have really bad lighting like this room, which has like a dozen spot lamps scattered across the ceiling. The bad lighting is gonna produce some really harsh shadows that isn't gonna make the product look particularly good. Now, sure, you could take like an entire studio setup with you to do the shots that way, but it's not always practical, it's not always possible. But with a five-in-one reflector like this, because it acts as essentially a diffuser, I can put it over said products. And so many times this has pulled me out of a situation where the lighting's just looked awful, the product would look crap. But just by using one or two reflectors, I can soften the light, maybe add a bit of reflection using just the light that I've got, rather than having to carry around a, a ton of lighting that, like I say, is not always practical. Now the cost of the reflectors do vary. The anywhere from about usually 20 to 40 pounds, depending on the size and the style that you go for. Some aren't reversible, some will only be transparent. Personally, although I primarily use this, the five in one is quite handy and for the little extra money, personally, I think it's well worth it. So those are three items that pretty much are always in my kit bag. I will leave links to them in the description down below if you're interested in checking any of them out. As always, guys, if you have any questions or queries, feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful and you haven't already done so, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and then hopefully, I'll see you in the next video. Don't worry guys, I'll get him in at the end.